Have you ever been petitioned by a cop for Oh yeah. Hell in your yeah. cop car? Hell yeah, in uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're in Phoenix, Arizona, on the blade, speaking with potential prostitutes, getting an inside look at their life and how it is on the street. You're pimping out of the kindness of your heart? For sure. Does that sound like an absurd statement to make? Absolutely not. Like when she go to sleep and pray, she praying to me. That's a crazy statement. Once again, we dive into the world of prostitution, this time in Phoenix, Arizona. This story takes place on the blade, the term used for the street where women can be seen walking at night looking for customers. The business of sex is a complicated one. Usually what you find is vulnerable women being controlled and manipulated by a devious pimp who oftentimes himself grew up in a rough environment where he saw prostitution from a young age. For a young man growing up in poverty, the allure of being a pimp is both financial and status related. Monetarily, it's a great way to make fast money and the profession of pimping has been glorified in rap music presenting an image of a smoothly dressed man with cars, women, and the latest fashion. Phoenix has long been a hotspot for prostitution and sex trafficking, two things that overlap. Recently, there have been major busts, including one operation that arrested over 300 people in early 2023. While most of the mainstream media believes talking to some local vaguely related to the story in a corporate setting of an office is the way to deliver news, I believe the best way to get to the bottom of the story is to go boots on the ground and get it straight from the source. Today, we do just that. Our story begins by interviewing a pimp, and as the story goes on, we find ourselves in a motel room with a prostitute getting ready for work and her pimp in the room as well. It's time to hit the blade. Quick announcement, time is running out to get your ticket. We have a live event in Milwaukee. So if you're in the Chicago area, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, nearby or wanna make a drive, come out to the show, two documentaries, it's gonna be fun. Oriental Theater, March 7th, link in description. And now, to the video. So it's 5 p.m. on a Tuesday night. This is the first impression of the blade. We're gonna show you what we see. Just think that this is somebody's reality that six, seven days a week. This is how they feed themselves, feed their kids. Like, could you imagine a mom being out here? Mom's gonna go out and work tonight. She'll be back in the morning. That's a, a crazy reality to me. They say this is the world's oldest profession, and I wonder if America's making the right calls in how we're handling prostitution. Would it not be safer to have brothels? Would it not be safer for the, the women, for the STDs? You cut out the pimps, which to me are the guys you gotta cut out of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people where we are right now. Sure, right now we on 27th Avenue Indian School. That's the blade, but really that's the start of the blade, but you feel me? We just gonna say that's the blade. And what's the blade? Uh, you gonna come down here, you gonna see some fat hoes, small hoes, anything, pigeon toes, but you feel me? Everything down here getting muddy though. To me, it's mind blowing that a man can convince a team of women to work for him, to be on the street, to put their body at risk, and then collect the money for that. Mm -hmm. How do you manage to do that? Well, we're not convincing to do anything. They seeing that we providing them a, a, a higher lifestyle for them. You feel me? Some females, they gonna be able to go to college. Some females, they ain't gonna never be shit. They need to run into a nigga like me or a nigga like us. Anybody on our lifestyle that's gonna actually elevate them and be able to give them what they need. Be able to, feel me? Put them in their car, put them in the house. A lot of people, they gonna be in their mama house the rest of their life. They ain't gonna never be nowhere. Fuck kids, fuck kids, but you feel me? Turn around. You see that? Can't make this up. <laughs> Almost when the road a window down. <laughs> What advantage do the women have in teaming up with someone like you? They by themselves, they liable to get broke. When you get broke, you a renegade, you out here by yourself, you ain't got nobody to protect you or help you. Anybody can do anything to you. They know you got a purse full of money, they know you ain't giving it to nobody, so it's on you. You need somebody to be able to watch your back, make sure you're safe, make sure you're okay, make sure you can eat, make sure you get home safe. Do you kind of view yourself as the bank and the security guard of your women? I'm everything. When they're out in the street, how much of what they bring in goes to you? Everything. 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 I mean, everything. Like when she go to sleep and pray, she praying to me. 
That's a crazy statement. Straight in, you know, it's, it is, it is, man. Do you think that's a fair arrangement that all their money goes to you? 100%, because it's going back to them in the long term. Anything they need paid for, it's coming right out of my pocket, and that's everything. What kind of things do you buy them? They might need a whip, they might need their rent paid, they might need a house. Their kids might need some clothes, their kids might need some food, their kids might need their daycare paid for. You never know what they might need, but whatever they need, that's why they give everything they got to me, and I'm gonna make sure everything okay. Tell people what a bottom is. That's the rely on like all the go they leave anything gonna you can't trust no to stay but your bottom you can trust that one that one ain't gonna never leave did you say f off yeah what does that mean when you f off on a nigga that mean like you could be f with another nigga anything it's really just anything to not to somebody liking you feel me where it's like all right you stop f with me but you ain't just stop f with me and keep it silent and letting letting nigga know what it is you feel me you f off on me you did something unrespectable and look just just out here she comes back again how can someone get away with that? That looks like so obvious what's going on. She ain't doing nothing wrong. She's just walking on the phone. You feel me? Hmm. I ain't seen no crime. Is this something that Phoenix police are trying to bust or that you have to worry about police? You for sure got to worry about police. We go two minutes up the street, you're going to see hella police. But like, ain't nobody doing shit. They don't see nothing going on. You feel me? Unless somebody's stupid enough to be seen. How do you view women? I love women. For real, I love everything about women, you feel me? I don't even like being around niggas. I only like being around women, you feel me? A nigga ain't gonna keep me paid, the bitch gonna keep me paid, you feel me? How would you feel if your sister was out on the blade? My sister is on the blade right now in really? Vegas, on my mama. How'd you find your way into this? Shit, bro, when I was like 18 years old, I was f***ing with this little bitch, or really an older bitch, but the whole time she was a hoe. I didn't even know she was a hoe. She just always had dough, you feel me? She'd pay for a little shit that I had going on, and it came to a point to where she started kind of like, you know, I'm gonna teach you the game. She wanted to see me get paid, you feel So me? an older woman taught you the game? For surely. What's the relationship you have with your mom? I talk to my moms every day. Does she, she know what you're up yeah, to? Yeah, she know what I do. What does she think about it? She don't like it, but she got to respect me. I got to take care of myself. She see how I'm taking care of myself. She see how I'm taking care of others, she think. Where do you see yourself on the, the balance of good and evil? Straight good. Ain't no evil in me, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Everything I'm doing is out the kindness of my heart. I'm trying to make sure everybody that is part of me, I play my part and we smooth. You're pimping out of the kindness of your heart? For surely. Does that sound like an absurd statement to make? Absolutely not. What happens if one of your girls comes back and doesn't bring a dollar home she wouldn't even come back i ain't gonna lie she know better than to come back and she ain't got no bread but it's like for what what you here for like you know what's the most a woman is brought back in a night usually a quota is about a band but you feel me i done had to bring in like 35 four bands in the night before is there a particular day of the week that's the hottest saturday Okay. Sunday morning. Is it a dangerous job? For me, I know how to play the game right, you feel me? I ain't never in my life been in no danger playing this, but I didn't hear some stories, but that's about it. Is it dangerous for the women? Yeah, I say it's dangerous for them at all times. They, if they not protecting themselves, they not making sure that they safe at all times, they not doing they perfect screening. When I mean perfect screening, I mean perfect screening. Because any little flaw could really have you jammed up. What makes a good John? He gonna have to pay and he gonna have to keep paying and keep paying and keep paying. One thing we've heard in Chicago and Los Angeles from both the pimps and the prostitutes out there is they don't they don't have black customers. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Yeah, we don't do no AAs. What is AAs? That's African American. No African American yeah, customers? Yeah, no African American. And why is that? It's never really nothing good coming with African Americans. They're usually too aggressive. They want too much. They're not paying enough. It's almost like a safety hazard. You know, well, no, no. No, just making sure you're checking yeah. this around. Okay, we're gonna keep going on the blade. Maybe we'll see you a little later tonight, but um, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing your story and I, I wish you the best, okay? So we're gonna hit the blade. We're gonna pick up some chicks. Without having any good street connections that can get me into the rooms with pimps and prostitutes, I decided to try my luck by driving around and trying to pay women for a conversation. This made me feel nervous, uncomfortable, and I struck out more than an eighth grade boy at the dance. Apparently, an Arizona YouTuber went around harassing these ladies before, so they were not too keen for an interview, understandably. I always feel like such a f***ing slimy bastard when we're doing this. It just feels so weird and wrong. When I visit tough places, I always look for people that are thriving despite the environment. We found a boxing gym, so I figured I'd talk to a coach and hear his mentality on how he steers youth in the right direction. We're at a boxing gym right now, as you can tell, kids are working out, they're jump roping, they're getting a sweat, and we're with a coach, what's your name, sir? Rafael Valenzuela, nice to okay. meet you. Okay, nice to meet you, coach. ¿Qué es el impacto de la prostitution in our area? Los niños no se enfocan en eso, ni siquiera voltean a ver a ellos. Ellos vienen y trabajan aquí en el gimnasio, llegan, se van a su casa. No andan en las calles, es diferente para ellos. Acá se van a correr a veces, y estamos cuidándolos de que no haya gente que los moleste. Piensa que un gimnasio como esto es muy importante para la comunidad. Oh, sí, es bien importante porque, como te digo, los enseñas a pelear 
pero también les forma disciplina cuando ellos crezcan vayan formándose bien para hacer, ya sea para un trabajo para estudiar lo que sea les forma su disciplina para ser alguien en la vida piensa que la policía necesita ser más fuerte ahí para que es la solución para esto pues ahorita yo pienso que con todo esto que está de las drogas que están saliendo que ya ves que hay tantas personas que están envueltos en drogas también es duro para la policía mantener todo esto pues controlado porque hay un policía o dos y hay como 100 o 200 gentes en la calle haciendo sus cosas entonces es duro para la policía yo pienso que ellos están tra trabajando en eso pero sí deben de estar un poquito más bueno, enfocados en eso también muchas gracias que tú haces para la, los niños y la comunidad so, muchas gracias. gracias a ti there apparently was a youtuber that was harassing prostitutes and so that's making it not very easy for us to try and talk to women we're gonna hop out on foot and see if we can just get people storage a perspective of the area so it looks like somebody's getting uh just got a customer and they're going to a motel It feels like we're in another world right now. This guy is kind of geeking out right now. Feeling like I was about to fold my cards, as a last ditch effort, I decided to go to a motel lobby and see who I could meet. After standing in line for a few minutes, my luck changed when a lady named Roxy got in line behind me. Here's what happened. Is it normally this slow here? What is it like night to night around here? Does it get hectic? Um, sometimes it does. Maybe you have like all the smokers that smoke blues hanging out around here. Sometimes it gets a little crazy, you know, like people fighting and want to shoot each other. Over you know? drugs or over like it, the it's pimping? Mainly over, it's not even got nothing to do with the pimping no more. It's all got to do with the, the pills, like the fentanyl, like it's not their area to take over. As far as Phoenix goes, this is the hotbed for pimps and prostitutes, yeah. un unquestionably, right? Yeah. So one question I have is, do you think it should be legal? Should we have brothels where you can legally go, do your business, it's a little safer for the women? To me, it's a job for them, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just it's just like strippers. It should be legal for them to do it, somewhere to go safe, you know, instead of just walking the blade and then people picking them up and then somebody, you know, hurting them or killing them or something like that. Have you ever heard of a bad story happening to uh, a woman Man, on the street? Man, I've heard of a lot. I've seen a lot of females get in a car and end up in the back of an alley, gutted up, cut up. I've seen a girl that was on the blade on Northern in the 27th and they found her body in the back of an alley just laying on an empty bed, no clothes on, stabbed up. How do you view the pimp in this? Is he a helpful person? Is he a parasite? Is he a bad guy? How I don't think these women need pimps, you know what I'm saying? I mean, why would you need a pimp when you're trying to work for the money for yourself? Some of these women are vulnerable, you know? What percent of the rooms here you think are dedicated to prostitution? <laughs> Travelers in. That's street. across the street. And over there, they can bring as many people as they want. Just the other day, I seen these two girls bring a trick over there, and uh, I don't know what they were trying to do, rob them or what, but they, he busted out their window, and then he left, and then they left. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, wow. It seems like a dangerous world to be in. Yeah, especially too for the tricks too, you know? Because they never know what's behind them doors, or they never know what's gonna happen. They can get set up. Somebody could be waiting for them to rob them and stuff. And most of these females are doing it for for the fentanyl, and that's pretty crazy. Does the pimp get the woman hooked on fentanyl? Is that part of the game? No, I think that they get themselves hooked on that. Some pimps, if you follow the girl, they'll come right up, right, right up on you and tell you, hey, what are you doing bothering my girl? And it's not, and they'll point a gun at you and <laughs> all kinds of shit. It's crazy. Have you ever met a pimp that you think is a good guy? Um, I know quite a few pimps. They're all right. Yeah, you see a lot, you see a lot of ambulance. Just uh, earlier today, they had the helicopters and like 10, 15 squat cars. I guess they were on high speed chase from here. The motel managers, do you think they 100% know what goes on? Of course they do. Some of them are with it and some of them ain't with it. I guess in some ways, I get it. Like, what are they gonna do? Say, no, I don't wanna feed my family. Like, that's the thing. Like, every person in the chain, at the end of the day, they're trying to survive. Yes, yes. And that's what this whole situation is. Like, the homeless, the prostitution, the drug addicts. Everybody's trying to survive out here. You know, this world is hard, you know? Do you have anyone waiting on you right yeah, now? Yeah, I have them waiting on me. And then the, oh, the truck? No, the, no, no, no. Do your thing first and we can talk Yeah, after. they're pushing a shopping cart, so they have all my bags in the shopping cart. So guys, motel like this 
their hot spots and their cities, major cities all around the country that someone's day-to-day -day life, the way they put food on the table is to sell their body. But you let me know in the comments, should it be legal? Would it be safer, better, cleaner if it was legal? Or hey, no, that's a line we shouldn't cross as a society. You guys let me know what you think. And one thing that's a little spooky about doing this is you never know how close a pimp is keeping an eye on you. Some car with tinted windows. I mean, we just saw pimps with crazy guns in the car. I think if you're not bothering someone, they're not gonna bother you. We're gonna wait for this girl and see what she brings us to. Um, they find like people already in, broken in the room. Yeah. Like, see how the bed's all like moved to the side? Yeah. Like, you can, you can move the furniture out. Mm -hmm. It's like dirty under there. Sometimes they don't even clean these rooms right. I stayed in that one over there today. And that one over there. I killed like two big roaches in that room. You, you move the bed, it was dirty. Comforts didn't look clean. They had like real thin pillows. It's just crazy. People been getting shot over here. Right now it's mainly over the fentanyl. Al Chapo Guzman put a stop to fentanyl for the, for the blues to come here. A lot to do with cartel, you know. I just got out of prison for, for sales of drugs. Like, uh, I used to sell a lot of drugs. That's why a lot of people know me around here. After this car accident and everything, I stopped. Like, I just had to quit, you know? Like, I gotta get my shit together. I'm waiting for my settlement to come through and then from the insurance company. Yeah, Hemp wants somebody that's gonna work. The room he pays for, food he's paid for, the clothes he's paid for, she has to work that off. When they have s the tricks, what percent of them you think wear condoms? I don't even think they do. It's just a dangerous game and this just one bad thing, you know? How much does this room cost tonight? It cost me $84, but it was supposed to be uh, $63. For a sketchy motel, $84 seems pretty high. It is high. Let me talk to them and that find out if they're comfortable with it. If they... Can I give you my number? Yeah, so that way they won't be all like, it's sketchy. Yes. Hey, um, I'm in room 176 right next to the laundry room. They're coming. All right, we'll see you in a little bit then. Like, think about this, picking up weed. Back in the day, you had to meet someone in a sketchy cul-de-sac or the alley. Dealer would drive up, you're nervous, the cops are gonna pull up. And now they have dispensers. You walk in calmly, you get what you want. You walk out, everyone's happy and no one gets hurt. I think it's pretty similar with prostitution. To see what a future could look like if sex work was legalized, let's look at two different case studies that are out there. In Nevada, the only place in the United States where it's legal, the results have been encouraging. Sex workers report a great reduction in violence, better relationships with police, and like the legalization of marijuana, the counties that have legalized it are enjoying increased tax revenue and tourism dollars that it brings to their area. In the Netherlands, they decided to legalize prostitution in specific districts that they call tipple zones. Cities that have implemented these zones saw a 30 to 40 percent decrease in incidents of sexual abuse and rape. A study I found from Yale estimates that major cities spend around $7.5 million every year enforcing prostitution laws, and something I thought of is that money could instead be invested to fighting crimes like shootings and theft. Things that are a little bit more major. What do you think? I think they're using that to block it. Have you ever seen a motel that is this secure? Like, as far as how to get in? Traveler's Inn's pretty locked down where I'm Miguel. Throw the drone up too, we can find. There's some weird stuff going on around here. Hey, Roxy. Hey, they just got in the door and they said give them a few minutes. Are they down? Yeah, they're, they're, they're down the top, so they give them a few minutes because they just got in the door. 10 minutes? Okay, cool, cool. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Out in the open, there's someone right there. It's a hoop. Thanks. <laughs> How are you? So I'm looking to talk to people. I'm looking to pay people for interviews. Oh, no, I'm good luck. Thank no? We just have to make sure we're not walking into a setup. True, because, yeah, that could be a setup too. I think we should bring up one. How you doing? Good, good, good. Um, I can hop out. You want to meet me at the gate? Here, I'm gonna come out right now so you can see me. These are my guys. What's going on? Nice to meet you. How long do you plan on going out for? Probably all evening. You're gonna go for 24 hours straight? Probably, that's my goal. That sounds exhausting. Not my best time. 
probably won't be my last. Uh-huh. So what goes through your head when you get ready to go out there? Just trying to stay positive. How dangerous is it out there for you? It could get pretty dangerous, to be honest. Can you run us through a story of an experience that might give people an idea of how hectic it can get out there? I mean, it could get pretty dangerous. I had this one client who didn't want to, like, give me, always make them pay me first, and then, like, I'll do the service or whatever. He, like, tried to take the money back from me and shit. I have, like, brothers and shit that I call, and, like, they handle this. Do you have some guys that if you need backup, you can? Yeah, not everybody has that, you know? I didn't have that at first. Is there anything you can tell about your clients or customers like? A lot of them are still married and <laughs> <laughs> literally cheating on their wives, and that's crazy as fuck to me. What percent of your clients do you think are married? Probably over half of them. Wow. Does that surprise you? Yeah. What percent of clients are wearing rubbers and what are? Like how? Oh, I don't do anything without a rubber, so. It seems like it would be pretty risky to do it without a rubber. Yeah, I mean, you're basically just gonna kill yourself. I know a couple girls that <clears throat> that do anything for a dollar. Can you tell me more about your story or how you got into this? I'll be 23 next month, and I've been doing this since 17. What happened when you were like, 17 that you said, hey, this is what I want to do? Well, I mean, my mom actually, I'm from Indiana, actually. My mom moved us back out here to Arizona, and we didn't have anything. We didn't have a house, we didn't have a car, we didn't have shit. And then my mom left me out here by myself. Your mom left you out here by yourself? Yep. Where did she go? She moved to Florida with her mom. So is this kind of just survival? Yeah. Here, is there anything you think would be important to tell people back home that might not know anything about this world? Don't be so judgmental towards people. I'm a peacemaker, I love peace. You don't know what the next person's going through, really. How long do you see yourself doing this for? Honestly, I don't know, but hopefully not too much longer. We've done a similar piece in Chicago and Los Angeles, and one thing we've heard from both pimps and prostitutes in both those areas is they don't do black customers. Okay, I don't do black customers either. Too risky? Yeah. What percent of women out here you think have pimps? I think back then when I first started working versus now, it's a lot of renegades now. Versus when I first started working, it's a lot of pimp, pimps and, and hoes. And do you think pimps are helpful or do you think they're hurtful to the business model? As long as they're not a gorilla pimp, then I, they can be very helpful. So you kind of need a pimp to survive in some ways? Yeah. Is the game plan basically to find customers and bring them back here? I do car dates. Is that the most common yeah. way of doing it? Yeah. Are there any weird fetishes that you come across? <laughs> this one guy, he, he hit me up and he's like, are you able to like, I didn't know what scat play was until, oh until I had to Google it when he yeah. asked me to do it. Yeah. Scat play? Who? Oh. I didn't know people like really like stuff like that. For any family or friends that might be out there wondering how you're doing, is there anything you would like to say to them? I'm good. I'm alive. Shit. They can hit my line. But I do have a son and I do um, see myself being more active in his life. When he's not with you, who does he stay with? My baby daddy's mom. Okay, let's go. You in the game or formerly in the game? I'll never leave the game. How young were you when you got into this game? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Who got you into this game at nine? Just watching. Born in Los Angeles, California. Do you grow up on Figueroa? Yeah, I know about Figueroa. Did you have any family members on the blade? Cousins, females. Did they teach you the game? Yeah. How old are you now? 34. Now that you're older, more mature, is that kind of wild to think like that you were that young and, and put in those type of situations? Yes, it actually does. So I hear all the time, pimps take 100% of the money. That to me sounds absolutely crazy. What is your take on that? She only gonna do what you let her do to you. you know what I'm saying, I mean, whatever she go for, that's what it's gonna be. I mean, there is something to do that there. Some that run their program a little differently, you know. So if people think, man, a pimp is just a parasite, do you agree with that or do you think that's, or do you disagree with that? It can be, but see, you got motherfuckers out there giving pimp a bad name. Is pimping a lucrative business? Very. What's yeah. the most you think you ever made in a month? 30. It's like an investment banker's income. It's not bad, huh? Do you ever feel bad for some of the prostitutes out there? Actually, I do. That's what made me stop. A lot of these girls were raised wrong. They weren't loved how they were supposed to be. It took me a minute to realize, like, the life comes out of that. You know, the whole baby comes out of that. That's crazy, like. This is the root of all evil. This will make the world go round. This is the best thing on earth. It'll make anybody do anything. Have you ever had to hunt down a trick and collect money? Yes. A lot? Yes. On the scales of good and evil, where do you see yourself? I see myself good. What percentage of women out there do you think have been sexually abused or abused as a kid? A lot. 
What percent of pimps out there you think have been abused as a kid? See, that's what I'm saying about this word pimp. You got boyfriend pimping, gorilla pimping, freak body pimping. What is a freak body pimp? These dudes out here that, that, that don't care. They'll pimp a tranny, they'll pimp a, a gay dude, they'll... It, it, this shit is wild, B. Like, this shit is illegal, flag on the motherfucking plane. <laughs> <clears throat> but I guess if it make you money, hey, but I ain't gonna be selling no boy pussy. That's out of pocket. Have you ever been in danger doing this job? Every day I'm in danger. 144 years. Have you ever got 144 years? You know, another one that got 422 years. From Arizona? 420 years? After Steve mentioned that he knew of pimps that got 144 year, 420 year sentences, I was curious to know the legal ramifications for each of the characters in the story. Pimps, prostitutes, and Johns. And it turns out it depends on the state. But let's take California for example. For a first time offender, if someone pimping an adult, they typically get a sentence of 3 to 6 years. But a really bad pimp who's involved in sex trafficking and more may get a few decades in prison like this Milwaukee pimp did recently. For the women caught soliciting sex, most states agree that it is better to help the women than heavily punish her. Because of this, prostitution is typically a misdemeanor and instead women are steered towards programs like probation, mandatory AIDS testing, and community service. And now for the Johns. Let's take Illinois for example. Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart noticed a discrepancy in the Department of Justice statistics. In 2010, 43,000 women were arrested for prostitution and only 19,000 Johns were arrested for soliciting it. He decided he wanted to go after the Johns soliciting sex and launch his National John Suppression Program. When the Johns are caught, they're given a ticket and a fine and the money from their fine goes to support counseling and job programs for the women's justice program, a program that supports the sex workers the police catch to steer them into a better future. Imagine the mother and <laughs> is telling you 422 years in the Department of Corrections. That's insane. All because of a stinking ass bitch. I learned a lot. Do you have any final thoughts? If you can get out of it, get out of it. If you don't put anything in it, don't expect shit out of it. Straight up. Families worry about them and think, you know, every day that shit on these streets is going to be okay. But it, you never know. I mean, there's so many girls that came up. There's a lot of girls that, that are missing right that now. That are missing. They found girls that, um, the tricks took them and ripped them and left them in the alley. There's a girl that they found over here on Northern, too, and the, they found her in a suitcase. In a suitcase. In a chopped chopped suitcase, suitcase chopped up. So that's the worst part about it. Like, they don't have to walk the blade. I think that's the cheapest hoeing you can ever do. Internet? Cool. That, that's more... Internet's the That's, worst. What? That gets dangerous too. Don't, don't, you can don't. have somebody lying to you about who the f they, they are. are. Yeah. Cam it up. You can get through it, just cam it up. They used to have where get on the internet and do just phone. You don't have to touch nobody, go see nobody. I think that's the safest way. I feel like if it was that easy, because then that's what nobody would be right doing. Now. Right. You know what I mean? That's, like, the, that's like, the number one fear of what's going on right now. These women are ruining themselves. Syphilis, gonorrhea, like these women are catching. And by the grace well, of God. These girls do take care of themselves, you know? You got some girls walking out here like, damn, like they look like high class prostitutes, you know? Like their shit don't stink. <laughs> What's the percentage of them that are, are not going to doctors, getting checkups, and it's high? They have to doctors. For those that I mean, do take care, take care of themselves, kudos, respect to you, like handle your scandal with them. the ones that ain't, you, you need know? to get it together. That's their lack of love. They don't have that person to teach them that right. shit. That's what I'm talking about. Like the ones that don't try to take care of themselves. And that's what the f is going on upstairs. I, I know. <laughs> Are the ones that go out and have sex for like twenty, thirty dollars Girl, you're, you're, you're really cheating yourself. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know? You, a baby come out of there, that shit is priceless. One At the end of the night, they're going to pay for one it. One pimp told me one time because he wanted me to work for him. He told me, girl, you're sitting on a thousand dollars right now. I'm <laughs> like, what the f are you talking about? It says me and the Bible. Quote unquote, men were made from dirt. We were came from dust, dirt. We were gonna return back to dust, dirt. Women were handcrafted. And then they say that we shall not uh, lust. I can't help it, shit, look what you made. Do you guys think that uh, sex work should be legal, that there should be brothels or women can work at? Yes, I feel like it'd be a lot more safer. Yes, it would. And the, most of these women wouldn't be getting killed out here. A majority of the, the killing that's in, out here is coming from prostitutes getting killed. Because this job involves women getting into cars or motel rooms with men they've never met, this profession carries a great deal of risk. Sex workers are some of the most common targets for killers. Take for example the Chicago Strangler, where 50 women over the last 20 years have been killed and almost all of them sex workers. When you mix the social stigma of the profession and police forces overwhelmed by cases, the result is many of these killings go unsolved and the predators out there are aware of this. A lot of these women are also 
hoeing for their addiction just to stay high. How much has fentanyl changed the game in hoeing? Oh man, fentanyl f that game. Oh, by far the worst drug that ever hit American soil. I've been 18 months clean off of them, man. Let me tell you, by far that was the best feeling, the best choice I ever made in my life was to stop f with that. What can you say about the power of fentanyl? It's terrible. I wish I was never introduced to it. I was smoking like 100 pills a day. What percent of the women out there you think are addicted to drugs in some way? Probably like 2% don't right. do drugs. I'd say a lot of them do it just to cope with what they're doing. What, what we have to go through, yeah. Do you ever enjoy yourself with a customer? Like this is kind of a fun part of the job or is it never fun? Yeah, sometimes they're just like good customers. Have you ever been petitioned by a cop for sex? Hell yeah. Hell in yeah. a cop car? Hell yeah, in uniform, right hand on the Bible, on my child's life. Are they good customers? Yes. You're the best one. Oh God. So do you like cop customers? No. Why not? They can switch up at any moment, you never know. This girl told me too that she, she had a cop, he would be her regular and she she would go attend to him and when she told him she didn't want to do that no more. He gets upset and now you want to change the rules yeah, and be a little jail. f***ing bitch. You try to put her in jail and stuff. All right guys, we'll stay safe, okay? All right. Have guys, a good night, okay? You guys stay Thank safe. You guys stay safe. safe. All right, folks, that's been an inside look into this world of pimping, prostitution, the people behind it, the stories behind it, and I hope you learned a lot, because I sure did. The mission of this channel is always to bring you the rawest and the real shit of what actually goes down here on planet Earth. Mainstream media is never gonna show you this, but I will. And a shirt that we've launched, don't believe the lies. Support the channel, get it on the store. Thank you for joining me on this journey. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Shit ain't nothing happening. Was gone a hundred ninety some days, but shit, I'm back in action. Pull on this block and put my gloves on just like Michael Jackson. Ain't need no light up in this bitch, and still my diamonds dancing. Watch how I come back and just take this rap game up for ransom. I fuck his bitch, he throw that ass. Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You wanna watch another? Here. You wanna subscribe? Over here. See you next week.